God is our bridge over troubled water. I want to start by just encouraging you here at home because I need to do the same. Let's take a breath. As you breathe in and as we breathe out, it's a reminder to me that even though we're all physically separate these days, we have this breath that links us with one another. And not only does it link us with one another, it links us to God. When we remember that scripture from Genesis where it says God breathed life into humanity. We have God's very own breath within us. We share it with one another. And in times like these, we recognize its value more than ever. I want to start with a reading from the psalmist, Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. God will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Times like this, it seems like there's so much to say, but it seems like most words that we seem to come up with are futile to really capture what we are experiencing. And I want to say that our service this morning, and you've heard it, it remembers Seth. I can't even look up at the sound booth right now because that's where he was throughout this entire pandemic, helping us, serving And of course, the gifts of music that he shared with us were not only talent, but they were gifts of love. You could see the joy in his face and in his body. But today, we are going to put words to not only the loss of Seth, but to the loss that we all feel and have felt at times in our lives. I've even seen on the chat people mentioning other losses that are important to grieve in their lives, in your lives. We all have these places that are still tender to the touch, places where we still grieve because we know this feeling. For me, I've shared with you the loss of my mother at an early age, the loss of a nephew at only nine days old. He would have been 15 a week from tomorrow. I know I'm not the only one. I know you all share these losses, these heartaches as well. And they're not only the death of a loved one, It might be abuse suffered at the hands of someone else. It might be the loss of a loved one to addiction. It might be a debilitating illness. And these are times when we dare, like Pastor Eric said, to raise our fist to God and say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, us, How does this work? Why do you let it happen? Because, yeah, we know that empty pit 
feeling in our stomach. We know that lingering headache after a fitful night of sleep with grief on our minds. We are well acquainted with that feeling of tears, even sobs, that it feels like just one little chink in the dam is going to have it all come spilling out. And then, years on, even after the rawness of the loss has passed, we know that bitter sweetness that is gratitude for the life, even though we feel the pain of the loss. We know the tug of guilt that comes and it's right on our sleeve. When we dare to feel joy again, But that's part of the beauty of life, isn't it? That joy, like death, is also unstoppable. That's how God has made this world and made us. And so as life goes on, we all sift through these shards of pain like broken glass on the ground and we lift them up to the light that streams in the window and we hope and we find that sometimes if the light hits them just right, they refract a rainbow on the wall. And again, we're grateful for life. Like I said, there are really no words on days, on weeks, we might even say on years like this, no words that can fully console, no pithy quotes that can take away the pain. Not even a scripture can really quell the feelings of injustice when a young and beautiful life is taken. I feel like maybe the best we can do sometimes for one another is offer our hearts our love. We can point to guideposts, trailblazes on the way that remind us of God's love for us and our love with one another. But even those sometimes don't work and we go wandering into the wilderness, a wilderness that sometimes must be experienced, and that's okay. My attention was drawn this week to one of the great preachers of a generation. His name is William, William Sloan Coffin. It was drawn to him because I had read the sermon long ago, but I came back to it this week, the sermon that he preached at the funeral of his own 24-year-old son, Alexander. Alexander's car had careened off the road and into Boston Harbor. In Sloan Coffin's sermon, after thanking parishioners for their kind thoughts and notes and prayers, it's interesting because his mood quickly shifts. He goes from gracious to irritated, even angry, because he recounts somebody lamenting Alex's loss with one of those sentences that's just, you know, sort of a throwaway sentence, well-intentioned. And somebody said, I just don't understand the will of God. She thought it would make him feel better. Well, it didn't. Coffin blew up, and he wasn't sorry about it. He said, it wasn't God's will that there was no guardrail on that section of road. It wasn't God's will that Alex had, hadn't fixed the crummy windshield wiper or that he was driving too fast for the conditions or that he might have had one too many. Sloan Coffin goes on, God does not go around the world with his fingers on triggers, his fists around knives, his hands on steering wheels. 
It was not the will of God that Alex die. That when the waves closed over that sinking car, God's heart was the first of all our hearts to break. Untimely deaths are not the will of God. I would take Sloan Coffin's thought a step further, and I would say that neither is God out there recoding cells to mutate into cancer. Neither is God guiding that malarial mosquito to that vulnerable child or setting place a world in which that child has no access to medical care. And no, God did not engineer COVID-19 to teach us some twisted lesson. Though I think we're learning some. Now, if you're wondering what I'm getting at is somehow quasi-heretical, stick with me. You might be right. Because I know a lot of you are finding it strange to think about a world where God is not micromanaging our lives and everything that happens. Maybe even a world where God does not have it all planned out. A world where our choices matter. And a world where some things are beyond control. Whether that's just the way it is or whether that's the way it got, that God set it up, I think that's the way it is. This is a world where the cosmic arrangement with God is that life uncensored happens. Yeah, it's a world with consequences. It's a world with bad luck. It's a world with serendipity, too. This is a world where God loves us so much that God is willing to walk with us even as life comes. That God is willing to walk next to us. That God is willing to be a bridge Let's call it over troubled waters. God carries us through the hard times of life. It's not all about, not all about protecting us from the realities of life. Now, yes, this is also a God who feels with us. A God who can also weather in full relationship what happens when these things happen. When our heartbroken cries of fury and frustration, of grief and yes, curses, cause us to say, like Jesus, God, why have you forsaken us? I'm not sure I want anything to do with you right now. God can take it. This is a God who loves us so much that she is willing to get her heart broken right along with us. This is a God who loves us so much that he is willing to be vulnerable with us. This is God whose deep and enduring love never fails, whose presence never falters. This is a God, the God, who showed us and shows us Time and time again that death does not have the last word. I hope you're with me. On Christ, this solid rock, we stand.
even when it's slippery. To end, I want to leave you with words from Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I hope you hear these words. And no matter where you're at in your journey of pain, of loss, of suffering, are able to take them and let them dwell within.